Hey folks, this is an exciting program here today. I think we finally have hit the launch pad and I think we got ignition. You're going to find out why. A lot of innuendo, a lot of things going on. Take a look at what's going on in the silver here today. Today, it's up over a dollar so far today. That's great news. Not as good as it's going to be, but anyway, it's still in the head in the right direction. Year to date, we're up 19.7%. Who else can say that about their portfolio, huh? Current gold, 24.16, it's up $352 at 14.59%. The DXY, somebody was asking me about the DXY. That's the relative strength of the dollar. Again, we're watching what's called a crack up boom. Dr. Jim Willie told us this, this was going to happen. It would rise and rise and rise and rise some more and it all went pop, all gone. Okay, so that's the way that the uh, the DXY is going to go. Rise and rise and rise some more and then pop, there it goes. Okay, so the Dow is down 244 points so far. I'm expecting some good bleed offs here today and we're going to talk about the reason why. So the 10 year bond is 4.49%. My goodness. Now, why is that lower than the two year? Can anybody answer that question? Another thing we should be looking at is was Jerome Powell honest with us. Did he tell us that the rates were going to stay the same? Did he say they weren't going to be doing any kind of QE until <clears throat> the next next uh, FOMC arrangement? Arrangement. Interesting. Folks, no. The, you ought to take a look at the 10-year yield and also take a look at the two-year. It's flopping all over the place. Look, this is like stepping on a banana peel, okay? And remember the three stooges, whoop, 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 like this, and the feet go out from underneath them? That's what's happening right now. They're, they're trying to keep everything balanced like this, and the feet going out from underneath of them. The 10-year yield is, is lower than the two-year. The 10 years all over the place. The two years all over the place. What in the world is going on? I'll tell you. Now, listen, I don't want to argue with you over the veracity of this report, okay? Only one person has come up with this report so far, but my team and I, we know what the next step is. And we know that what has happened, uh, what is rumored to have happened is the next step, which is congratulations. It looks like the United States has joined BRICS. That's cause for celebration, folks, because it had to be this way. There's only one person that's reported on this. Her name is Madeira Greer, G-R-E-E-R-E. -E -E, okay. Here's a copy of the report. I suggest you might want to ask us for a copy of it. I'll get it out to you. Okay. This is the only person that's reporting on this. You know, she's been backed up by a guy that's on, uh, I think it's Twitter, called Jack Straw. Now, Jack Straw, he's out there a little bit too. But the thing is, is that if this was widely known here even today, holy cow, folks, folks, we're looking at, oh, dag on it. Oh, what happened? <laughs> folks, silver's at $29.99. $29.99, folks. Golly days. Look, there's a psychological barrier here at $30. We broke through that. My gosh, on a Friday, imagine what Monday's going to be like. Holy cow. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. I've been waiting 11 and a half years for this. You guys just tuned in and you joined us in, in some March 1st. Holy cow. Congratulations. Look, I'm really excited. I know what's going to happen. I don't know that you know all that's going to happen, and nor should you. You haven't spent the kind of time, nor do you have the kind of connections that I do here. But I'm telling you, folks. I believe that this lady is correct with her report. The United States of America has just rocked the financial world by joining the BRICS alliance. This unprecedented move announced by none other than Donald Trump himself marks the beginning of a new era in international economics with the once dominant dollar now facing its demise. Prepare to witness history in the making as we delve into the implications of this groundbreaking development and the countries clamoring to join the BRICS club right now. The fact that the U.S. just signed on Everybody else is going to want to sign on too. What that means, though, is that the end of the fiat dollar has arrived. It's done. Anything you can do to get rid of those hot potatoes right now in exchange for real money is a smart thing to do, a smart butt thing to do, okay? Otherwise, your currency is going to be another one of those uh, defunct pieces of currency I have over on that desk that I showed you before. I'm, I'm going to show you that before the show's over, okay? We're going to come full circle on that. The BRICS alliance comprising of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa now have the United States stand as formidable force challenging the, head, the Western hegemony of the dominated financial institutions. Now, look, the BRICS have already set up their own cross-border payment. Oh, my gosh. I'm not making this stuff up. You guys check this out for yourself. This is a wild butt broadcast. 
This is wild, man. Wild, wild, wild. I am glad we're coming on here at 11 o'clock. Holy smokes. Folks, you better get on the phone. If you got any fiat left, you better scramble and get rid of it now. The silver is cranking up. The inventories are just about gone. And I'm not trying to hawk silver, daggone it. I'm trying to get you to get your money into something that's real. At this point in time, even after a block of a doc, gosh darn copper, whatever, get rid of the fiat. Think of it as a hot potato. I know I'm a little excited here. I know what's going on. We've been studying this for 11 and a half years. The U.S. had to join the BRICS. Otherwise, we'd be isolated. Imagine this. The majority of the, of the world's transactions right now are taking place outside the dollar. If that's allowed to happen and we continue to hold on just on the dollar, we're going to be the last guys out there. We're going to be isolated. We won't have access to international trade. I'm going to be talking about countries that want to be joining right now and what they're bringing to the table, like youth in Bangladesh. I know that sounds weird, but I have the proof here, folks. Follow along, okay? 27 years as a certified estate planner, certified financial planner. This is the bomb, folks. This is the bomb. We're watching silver as we are watching this happen right now. This ought to go down in the annals of history. This is a wild, wild broadcast, I got to tell you. So with a combined GDP exceeding $20 trillion in a population accounting for over 40% of the world's total, BRIC commands attention on the global stage. Who in the world has not heard of BRICS yet? B-R-I-C-S. Follow the yellow brick road. Hey, any similarity there? Any coincidences? Come on. It's not just about economic might. It's about reshaping the narrative of power and influence in the 21st century. It's about putting the power back in your hands. You are going to be rewarded for what you did. You took a stand. You stacked. Some of you guys out there are stacking 8, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. Your day is here. Watch this. We've already broken through 30. This is a psychological barrier. We're going to see a break through 35, then 40, then 50. Then what you're going to see is something called a circuit breaker. They're going to t- stop the market because it's going up too fast. And they're going to allow it to have some breathing time because that's what free markets are all about. Oh, free markets, huh? Why don't we learn a little bit about free markets? Keynesian economics. Folks, please read about this stuff. It may sound dry, but my gosh, it's only one paragraph. I can make it funny for you anyway. Okay. So please get a copy of this because this is what's going on. Look how Keynesian economics is all about governmental control. Now, let's contrast that to Austrian monetary economics, which is where I come from. And you should be coming from, too, because it empowers you and your economic thoughts and activities. Okay, Things that you may think are going to make a difference in the world may very well make a difference. Where do all the inventions come from? They come from small business for the most part. Okay, Now, there are a couple of people that made some great inventions, like the guy that invented the sticky stuff on the back of the 3M. But, yeah, isn't that nice? The thing that you sell so many of, the 3M stickets, really, they, they, tried, they, they treated this guy real nice. They said, look, we're, we're paying you to do this. I think they gave him like a $1,500 bonus. Look what they did for 3M. Put them back on the map. Anyway, it's a new world. So for decades, the dollar has reigned supreme as the world's reserve currency, giving the United States unparalleled control over international trade and finance. However, managing debt, economic uncertainty, and geopolitical tensions have eroded confidence in the greenback. I wonder why that is. Maybe we're funding wars with fiat currency in countries that we shouldn't be a part of. Who was it that told us? One of the founding fathers. They stay aware, stay aware away from uh, from foreign entanglements, right? Don't let a, a private bank take over your country. And that's exactly what happened. Woodrow Wilson did it. So anyway, 1913, December 23rd. We have airplanes back then. How did all these people get together and vote on this? Was there a quorum? Folks, people need to ask the questions. You don't own the dirt under your head. You don't own the stock certificates because you don't have a QCIP number on them. Okay. You don't own the money in your money because there's no more silver left in the money unless you're smart and you get the real stuff now the, uh, while the fiat currency is still being accepted. The gold standard versus fiat currency. At the heart of the paradigm shift lies a fundamental debate. Gold versus paper money. What do you prefer? I got a table full of the paper over there. I'd rather have the gold, wouldn't you? With the USA Corporation Federal Reserve relies on a system of fiat currency backed by little more than the faith. Faith. Tell me about this. And credit. Ha- I think that ship sailed a while ago. Is there any credit left? Goodness, not part of the government. Probably lots of credit with you left. You're playing by a different set of rules. The banks say, hey, you guys pay your bills on time and stay out of debt. Make the regular cash payments, okay? They're all going to keep you in debt. That's the name of the game, okay? While the banks, what they do is leverage everything out to the hilt, and they've taken so much of the money that it, what you have in the bank doesn't even belong to you anymore. We were showing that on the U.S. debt clock. There's only less than 20, there's around $20 trillion right now in the checkbook 
of the United States Federal Reserve notes to negotiate whatever check it is that you want to move. So prior to the show, over $500,000 has got moved into silver. Friday, $840,000 has got moved into silver. People are seeing this. You, it has intrinsic value. It's the money of your country. It's finite. And this stuff we're talking about here is super finite because they're, they're not making it anymore. As a matter of fact, we understand that the U.S. Mint, as of March 1st, is not making any more 2024 American Silver Eagles, even though they're type twos. What's going on with that? So the heart of the United States Corporation Federal relies on a system of fiat currency. We know about that. Backed by little more than the faith and credit of the government, the U.S. Tre Republic Treasury boasts substantial reserves of gold. Really? When was the last time it was audited? Besides, have you ever seen a, a gold bar? Are they all uniform size? How do you stack those things up? You don't. It was a joke on us the first time around when they took a picture of what was inside the Federal Reserve, inside uh, Fort Knox. All these bars were stacked up on top of one another. Well, how could that be? We're going to stack these things 30, 30 up top, 30 tall. It doesn't work, folks. We got to start thinking. They played another game on us here. Okay. We can't trust them. The only thing you can trust is your money under your pillow and a nice, uh, nice, uh, nice uh, six rounder to take care of some protection. Take care of yourself, folks. An ounce of protection is worth a pound of cure. If I'm wrong on this, I apologize, but I don't think I am. I mean, <laughs> this is the third. Not for me. I'm not doing this anymore. Once you guys are made safe with the silver and once we get your estates planned properly and all the all the snafus are out of it, and you're made aware of what it is that needs to be in your estate plan. And this is global because this isn't just here in the U.S. Every country on the world has the same kind of problem with how to transfer assets, especially in order to do it in death. Or is it better to transfer them into a trust now so that you're passing? It's a new person steps in and takes over the management of those assets. So anyway, we'll spend more time on that. The decision to align with the United States with BRICS underscores a commitment to sound monetary policy and fiscal responsibility, rejecting the notion of endless money printing, deficit spending, in doing so challenging the entrenched interests of Wall Street and banking elite who have profited immensely from the current monetary system at the expense of you and me, ordinary citizens. Remember the, uh, the inaugural speech that Trump gave, returning power to you, the people. How is that going to be done? It's going to be done with the silver. Now, look, everyone will be a fine. You got to, you, after this whole thing is over, we're all going to be given a stipend and everything will be a hunky dory to some degree. Okay. But if you have assets and you can keep those assets on your own domain and you come out of the other side of this thing with assets, then you fall into that chart that we keep talking about. This one here, you need to get off the internet. Okay. And not the internet, get off the website. This is the number of ounces of silver that you need to have in order to be in the top 1% of the global population. It's broken down in ounces and it's also broken down in monster boxes, okay? So if you learned anything here today, I'd like you to like, share and subscribe, okay? We're being throttled back a little bit. It's very interesting. We only have like 3000 subscribers, but over 50,000, 5,500 people are watching each time. So uh, we're getting either new people coming in or people are watching and not subscribing. That's fine. It's your world. I'm just passing through whatever you want to do. But if you can get the, the word out a little bit better, I'd appreciate it. So um, this whole system has profited the banks. They got your silver. You got the worthless pieces of paper. Okay. There's a song about that. She got the bedpost and I got the mortgage note or something like that. I think it was a country song. I forget the name of it. Oh, I'm Shania Twain, Twain's maybe. <laughs> Chalk it up to Shania, Shania Twain. <laughs> so anyway, as the BRICS takes its side with the United States, look at the other countries and look what they're willing to do. Japan, we used to get a whole lot of cars out of there. With its advanced technology and industrial prowess, stands ready to assert its influence in the BRICS block leveraging a strategic position in the Asian Pacific region. Indonesia, next one on the list here, okay? Indonesia is the largest economy in Southeast Asia, boasts abundant natural resources and burgeoning middle class. That's what we need. Our middle class is shrinking right now. As a matter of fact, it's aging. We have the baby boomers. You see the gray hair or lack of it? So um, next we have Thailand, known for its vibrant tourism industry and manufacturing sector, seeks to capitalize on its location. There's Thailand that could go into Singapore. Okay. I know these places sound far off, but these are our neighbors on our planet earth. We got to get along with them. No more beating them up and no more dropping bombs on them. All that crap's got to end. All right. You're paying for it. I'm paying for it. Everybody's paying for it. The only people aren't paying for it. Those people are taking the money from us to make the bombs in the first place. 
So anyway, we've got to wake up, folks. Enough's enough. Thailand is known for its vibrant tourism and uh, industry manufacturing sector and seeks to capitalize on a strategic location outside of Southeast Asia. Singapore, a global financial hub and, and trade gateway, offers unparalleled connectivity. Do you see how the BRICS block is coming together? It takes it takes the world. Everybody has a specialty. We're talking about talents, right? Everybody's been given a talent and how a town is a large amount of silver uh, in the olden days, the biblical days. OK, when you were born, you were given a particular talent. If you hadn't found it yet, you need to develop it. OK, it took me a little while to develop mine. I'm still working on it. <laughs> in the wake of the United States, historic decision, April 11th, yesterday at 9 a.m., it was signed. Now. Why would they get that specific if it wasn't that specific? Okay. Now, why isn't the rest of the world, why isn't this being widely publicized? Because if it did, everyone would be running for the hills right now to be swapping out their fiat for real money. There's not a whole lot of it left yet. This last 500 and some thousand just came in. I think that pretty much just wiped that golden eagle. I don't know what's left. We'll have to ask. But at any rate, in wake of the United States historic decision to join BRICS, the world stands on the brink of transformative shift in the balance of power. Absolutely. It's coming away from the United States being the big guy with the big stick. We're all going to get away on his neighbors. Remember, I was talking to you. We want to have we want to invite Canada down for our uh, Patriot Silver show. We want to invite the world into us. OK, we're all brothers and sisters. Nobody wants to fight. Nobody wants to bleed. Nobody wants pain. Everybody wants happiness and health. We all want fresh air, fresh water. Don't we? We all want healthy food. We all want to be loved. Don't you want to be loved? Come on. Everybody wants to be loved. Nobody wants to be hated. People out there, I mean, thank goodness a lot of the haters have got left us from this uh, broadcast or whatever. I don't see anymore. But, you know, turn turn your wicked ways, man. You know, get inside and adjust that uh, that moral compass of yours. It's in there. You just got to find it and adjust it. You need a little bit of help with it? Tune in programs like this. We'll help you get your head screwed on straight. So at any rate, lots of great things happening. I'm very excited for the future here. Um, one of the things I wanted to go over was... Um, Reemphasize the fact of what's going on with the DXY. Again, the dollar is certainly it's the cleanest, cleanest dirty shirt in the laundry. You got to think of it that way. It's all going out with the bathwater. Okay. So the question is, Ted, can you tell me why the dollar is blasting 105.75 off while gold 2400 and silver 2950 and also blasting off? Everything is manipulated, folks. The only thing you can't manipulate is God's love for you and the periodic table. That you can't manipulate. And I don't care what you've done. God will always be there. Repent. You did something bad. Say you're sorry. All right. So next thing I wanted to go over was um, I wanted to go over the examples of the syntax. I think this is absolutely reprehensible. Here we are having additional taxes levied on for such things as cruises, air travel, jet fuel, gasoline, fishing gear, firearms, boat motors, tires, fuel, heavy he tra highway tractors. This is stuff we need as a syntax. That doesn't seem right, does it, to you? I don't think so. So one last thing I want to go over here with you before we let you go is um, I, got a, I got a nice little uh, message from somebody, uh, a friend of ours in Canada. It says, sorry, here you go. Sorry, Ted, the, the beautiful American three nines fine pure eagle is most recognized in America, not the world. Oh, let's take a look. It's the four nines Canadian mint coin that's most recognized around the world for purity and sure, perhaps quality. I also believe Canada mints more Canadian silver maples than the U.S. mint silver eagles as well. By the way, love your videos. P.S. I might be bringing a little bias. I'm from Canada. I would have never known that. How about you? <laughs> that's right. I love you. Okay. But the facts got to speak for themselves. So uh, we have a vol everybody working for uh, working on this here now is a volunteer. So um, Tina put together this chart. I'd like to put it up and show you the facts. The facts are the American Silver Eagle began production back in 1986. In 1988, the Canadian Maple first started its introduction. OK, so the Canadian maple is represented in the in the red here and the American silver eagle is represented in the blue. All right. Now, what I'd like you to keep in mind, OK, is that according to the data that's available to us since the inception of the, 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 the Canadian maple leaf in 1988, they have minted one hundred and fifty five million five hundred sixty three thousand nine hundred ninety two. 
Okay. Now that needs to be divided into their population of 38,930,000, which would get you to around four ounces per Canadian citizen. All right. However, here in the United States, we've minted multiples of the of, uh, maple leaves that you guys have minted. Not the competition thing. You brought it up. I didn't. So um, American Silver Eagles, we have made 656,908,982. That's a little bit larger than 155,962,992. I told you I was the baiting champ. So we're not going to let anything. Look, take shots at me. It's great. I enjoy this kind of stuff. It's a lot of fun. All right. So look at this in America. This is a very, very interesting thing we're going to be talking about here because in the United States of America, there's less than two ounces available for each person on the in the United States to have one. So isn't this interesting? So the American Silver Eagle is the most popular and widely known and longest in production one ounce pure sovereign silver three nines pure coin, but it's also the most scarce. Who most scarce. You know what, folks? That's one of the attributes of real money, scarcity. Because if everybody has it, then your time is just worth as everybody else's, right? No scarcity. Your talents and skills are different than everybody else's, and you need to be rewarded in that in your own way. And uh, you just got to find the place that accepts your talents for who you are, and they can apply them in the, in the right way, okay? So the bottom line is, is I think, based upon this data, is that there are, are less American silver eagles per person than there are maple uh, uh, silver maple leaves uh, in the silver fashion to satisfy the number of people up there in uh, in Canada. So Canada has four ounces of maple leaves per person. The United States has less than two. I suggest you give that a lot of thought. Now, right now there are fourteen dimes. It would be for ad infinitum, but there are currently fourteen dimes. There are 14 dimes. Stop it. Dead. There are 14 dimes per one ounce. Okay. So if these dimes roughly run $2 a piece. That's $28 for an ounce of silver. Okay. Now they have gone up 10% since we first started talking about this. So a bag of these suckers now are going to cost you about 22,000, which means that each dime is going to be $2 and 20 cents. So now you're looking at about $30 and 80 cents for one ounce versus if you try to get an Eagle right now, type one, that is, you're looking at about 36, $37 for one Eagle. Folks, there, it's not a matter of anything other than the purchasing power of the dollar that you're going to be using to exchange or swap. Think of it as a receipt for the real money. OK, it's nothing more than the value of that continued drop because of creating more and more and more of these things. OK, do we have time to take a quick look at the U.S. debt clock? If I could show them what's going on here, because I can bring it up. Okay, she said she's going to take a minute and give it up. In the meantime, I'd like you to take a look at this. Because remember we were talking about the number of uh, paper ounces of sold to each ounce of physical that's been sold? Remember that un the, that number was uh, 393 a while ago? It's still an outrageous number, meaning that there are 393 people that have bought a paper facsimile, facsimile of the one ounce of silver versus the one ounce of silver that actually exists. So if you do the math yourself, if we're looking at $30 for an ounce of silver right now on the paper exchange and they sold 300, let's call it 400, then that $12,000 is what they've collected per ounce of silver. And you can buy it right now for under 40. I think that's a heck of a deal, but you know, that's the math book that I came from. So anyway, go over here to the left side. You'll see down in the bottom third, you'll see 20 trillion, 636 billion, 900 and some million. Okay. That's the total amount of money that's in the checkbook of the United States. When that money's gone, your checks won't clear. Now, the checks that you're going to be wanting to, to uh, draw against that 20 trillion are the 623 trillion 499. Uh-oh, that's more liabilities than there are assets in the checking account. Hey, the fund doesn't stop there, folks. Let's take a look at the US national debt of 34 trillion. So you had the 34 trillion to the 623 trillion. In my book, that adds up to 657 trillion dollars all backed up by $20 trillion that's in the checking account? Folks, that's less than 3%. You're going to be lucky if you get anything out at this rate. But let's see just how much money the government actually has. Is our country actually solvent at this point? Then wouldn't we take a look at the total U.S. assets, bottom line here in the green, at $187 uh, trillion, uh, $715 $303 million. Okay, are you with me? All right. So that's what the total worth is of our country. However, the liabilities and the unfunded liabilities 
214 trillion. So as my dad used to tell me a long time ago, if your outgo exceeds your income, then your upkeep becomes your downfall. Essentially, right now, the United States is bankrupt in dollar terms, not in terms of your mental capacity, not in terms of your health, not in terms of the love you have for your children, not in terms of the love you have for your spouse and each other. Okay, but in terms of the dollar issued by the Federal Reserve, the country is broke. The world is broke. While you can still negotiate the dollar bills that you have, think of them as redemption certificates for the real money. You got to get the real money of your country before it's too late. Now, we're only talking about here in the United States, but the, the folks, you guys are reaching out from all across the country. I mean, all around the world. I mean, we have people reaching out to us from 30 countries so far. Matter of fact, here they are. Can we get back to the screen here? Oh. We'll move off the debt clock and uh, let's see see where we go. Also, the vibe board is coming in, so I'll be able to do math problems and bring up things a lot easier for you and make it a lot more seamless. So these are different countries that we have had interest in us, and they're telling us the same things that you guys are telling us. Such a breath of fresh air to see truth. Okay. So again, get a copy of the silver chart. This will tell you exactly where you need to be, how much silver you need to be holding. And if the country that you're living in is not one that's uh, um, that has a sovereign coin, do some research on it. Maybe it's uh, Kiribati or Bangladesh or whatever else. Uh, but do some research on that. No mistakes at this point in time. You're not going to get another chance at this. This is one off. Your parents never had this chance. Your children, your grandparents, your grandchildren. It's a one off, folks. Get the silver. Where are we with silver right now? We still over 30 right now. Anybody know? Let me look. Okay. Margaret Ann's checking the price. 29.37. Okay. Wow. See what's going on, folks. This is blatant manipulation going on here. Okay. It's going to break through. And the way it's going to break through is by us taking the physical off the market. So you take a look at the websites and see what's missing. Okay. What you'll see missing is constitutional silver. So for those of you that are still trying to get it, there might be some reach out to me. Um, either uh, email me, Ted at tedspeaks.net if you're interested in getting something as far as turning the dollars that you have in for for physical silver i'm only going to recommend to you the type one american silver eagles and junk eagles and junk uh, dimes and quarters and half dollars at this point in time uh when that's gone then we'll come up with a plan b but at this point in time let's go with the tried true and proven okay so again there's not a whole lot of eagles to go around please let's like share and subscribe we got to get these algorithm things up and so we uh, have 313 folks watching. 313. 313 Ted heads. Okay. The hats are on. The hats are in. And we have 146 likes. They need Whoa. to get those likes. Come on, guys. Please hit the like button. All right. If you're out there and you learned something, please hit the uh, the thumbs up button. Maybe it's called the thumbs up button on uh, where you're coming from. But um, please, uh, we put a lot of time into this. And all I'm asking you to do is, is show some appreciation for it. If it's not good, don't tune in. Tune in. If it is good, let us know. Okay. So um, anything else we have to go here? Um, if any of you are interested in supporting us, we're all volunteers. Okay. Uh, if you're interested in supporting our marketing efforts, Nick is doing a great job with the thumbnails and keeping us out there. He's got us on uh, Telegram, Instagram, uh, Facebook, what all, all those things. Merchandise, Ben is taking real good care of us as far as the mugs are concerned. The hats are ready to go. I think we have the hats priced at $18.99. Somebody came forward and gave us $5,000 as a donation to help keep the prices down so that we got a, a nice size order in. So the hats are available at $18.99. The, the, uh, the mugs are in for $6.99. Mike is uh, from API is working on the shirts for us. They're going to be a real nice heavyweight cotton uh, shirt like this. And it's going to have uh, uh, Ted Speaks. And underneath of it, if you know, you know, if you know, you know, where have you heard that before? So the acronym IYKYK, okay, that's what it means. And for those of you that are finding nothing can stop what is coming, that's on a lot of our marketing pieces as well. We're all tied together. The message is here for you folks. So thanks very much for tuning in. You better take a close attention here. Pass this along. If you're, help, if you're caught holding the dollar, in digital or in physical form, you're going to wind up losing the purchasing power of it. It is being taken over by the banks. That's why the cost of everything is going up. So, folks, we have a great program uh, planned for you on Sunday. Uh, Pastor Norris Belcher is going to be back, and he's going to be talking to us as a new message for us on Silver Sunday Sermons. 
So uh, have a great day. Make it a wonderful day tomorrow. It's Saturday. And keep your ear tuned to see what's happening today. But uh, as things break, I'll be bringing it out to you. But I think we're real close to breaking out the bottle of champagne and, uh, and, and saying congratulations to you guys. For those of you that hung in as far as long as you did, there's power and persistency. There's power and persistency and you did it. Congratulations. So to all of you that have given up hope or you're losing hope or whatever else, hope is here. Hope is here. The documents have been signed. It's what needed to have happen. The United States right now is part of the BRICS alliance. We're all moving forward together, and we are moving together as a block away from the BIS.org. It's not our fault that this has happened. The Bank for International Settlements has been issuing all the fiat currency around the planet for the last 150 years. They're being restricted. They're actually being removed from that uh, ability to do that. So they're no longer able to make any new currency notes, which is why we're, uh, we're experiencing this, uh, this drop in the V1, the velocity of money uh, uh, that we've been talking about. And also the M2 money supply is dropping down. Take a look at the, uh, what happens today. Actually, it should be up at 2 o'clock in terms of the Federal Reserve reverse repo operations, find out how much money they're going to put back in the system here for us. Anyway, great, folks. I think it's been a fabulous program. We're on the right track. Monday's going to be a wild day. This weekend is, is shaping up to be pretty interesting. If you want to get out of the dollar, give me a call. Reach out, Ted, at tedspeaks.net. There's still some junk dimes left. There's some uh, some quarters left. I don't know about the monster boxes. Go on the website, take a look. Check anybody else's website, see what they got. I think um, SD Bullion has uh, two Type 1 monster boxes left of $23,000 a piece. Uh, we just took an order for Golden Eagle and have like eighteen nine. Still high price. We first started talking about this. We were able $10,000 a piece. Now they're double. Why is that? Because they've created so much more currency. Additionally, people are understanding what's going on. They want to get out of the dollar and they want to get into real hard money that they can sleep on top of. So anyway, please hit the like, share, and subscribe. What are we up to as far as likes right now? I'm refreshing. We have 215 likes. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We need to get the numbers up so we can get the, into better search engines so this uh, program, this information gets out and helps everyone. So thanks very much. God loves you, and I do too. Have a great day. Bye-bye.